one of the most competitive sport classes within the MSA British Rallycross Championship is the Swiss Sport Suzukis. They're identical cars, and here, Morgan Bailey has been the driver to beat, along with Simon Overenden. They have five points apiece, having been the guns across the three qualifying heats that everybody has. And now we look forward to the two semi-finals. The first semi-final set to get underway. Morgan Bailey is the man on pole position. The drivers now look towards the lights as we get set to go racing. Chris Woolett, Rob Shield at the front of the grid as well. And Chris Woolett from the middle of the front row is the man who makes the best start. Now it was Woolett that won at Croft. And as they run down towards Hatchet's hairpin then for the first time, Rob Shield is one of those that takes the joker lap. And behind him in the yellow and black car, very distinctive, is touring car team owner Adam Weaver. The man behind the Power Max racing squad in the BTCC, a no mean rally crosser himself in action this weekend. He's trying to get through into the final as they all are. Top four will qualify and Rob Maynard in 76 runs third. They work their way through the chicane, the circuit modified for this year, and now they make the run towards the loose for the first time. It's been pretty slippery across there. It's had to be watered at times. It's been quite dusty during the course of the day elsewhere, but this is a real challenge for the drivers as they work their way through this slippery infield part of the circuit and then make the run down towards Honda Curve, back onto the tarmac speed building. Rob Shield, you saw him 152, son of former British champion Michael Shield. The cars accelerate through on the curve and then up over the line. So Chris Wallet, who's made a very good break from the opposition, he leads at the end of the opening tour. Second is Morgan Bailey. Remember how well he has gone in the heats across the course of the day. And now Rob Maynard coming under attack. He goes for the joker lap. And that means that Rob Shield ducks up the inside of him and retakes track position. Adam Weaver also there, look, getting himself back into the mix. He takes the conventional route through Hatchets, not the joker lap this time, he's done his. So now he sets off in pursuit of Rob Maynard. Big lock up there, who was that getting it all crossed up? It was 26, and that's Morgan Bailey. It's a very fast left-hander, and then you stand on the brakes, thread through the chicane, and work towards the loose. Up towards the top of the circuit, and then you keep on wriggling. Drivers in the supercar class, though, have said it's a nice, fast, flowing feel to the circuit these days. So generally, the work that's gone into Pembrey over the winter has got a thumbs up from the drivers. Morgan Bailey sprinting his way back towards the tarmac. Rob Shield there going after Chris Woolett. Now, Woolett yet to serve the joker. The question is, when he does, whether or not he's going to be able to come back onto the circuit in the lead of the race. Adam Weaver there, hard at work. Turns his way through Honda Curve, wipers on. You don't need them on this part of the circuit, but if they are on, then... You don't have to worry about flicking the lever when you hit the loose and you get all the mud in your face. Adam breaks late, locks up a rear wheel and turns right through the hairpin now. His brace of Vauxhall Astra is going strongly in the British Touring Car Championship this year. There's another Rallycross connection there because one of his drivers, Senna Proctor, grandson of Tony Proctor, who years ago wowed everybody with his bewinged Ford Capri in the mid-80s. Adam Weaver then heads towards the loose once again. Now up front, Chris Woolett leading the way. Chris, who came from oval racing into Rallycross a couple of seasons back. He's got faster and faster in the Swift Sports Suzuki's. And so now, very much one of the pace setters. There he is from the middle of the front row. And he's being chased now by a charging Rob Shield. Is that gap going to come down sufficiently for Rob Shield to be able to nip through when Woolett has to take the joker lap? Over the line he goes. Foot nailed to the boards now as he tries to build an advantage. Down towards the hairpin pair of them turn through that right hander which effectively cuts out the long drag down towards the hairpin on the full circuit here and Chris Woolett hangs on to the advantage now Morgan Bailey is another one pressing on in pursuit he runs third at the moment is he closing on Rob Shield possibly that gap does look as though it's coming down ever so slightly now onto the loose section once again drivers stabbing away at the throttle but to the eye, it looks as though Chris Woolett is being caught ever so slightly now by Rob Shield. Rob, who's done a bit of circuit racing in his time as well in Formula Ford, for example. But now concentrating on Rallycross. It was the Shield family that kept, that kept Croft open, in fact, in the uh, 1980s, just as a Rallycross circuit brought the Internations Cup to Croft. And although the circuit now, of course, has a full programme of car racing once again, in the late 80s, it was just Rallycross and really just the Shield's enthusiasm that kept the place alive at all down to the hairpin then goes 1-5-2 Rob Shield 
And how close is he to Chris Woollett? Let's see, there is the answer. He's ahead of him now on the Joker lap because Chris Woollett has to go all the way down the straight and turn through the hairpin and he loses the race lead, loses track position then against Rob Shield as now they work their way towards the chicane and then onto the loose. And in fact, not only has Woollett lost the lead, he's in danger of losing second spot to Morgan Bailey who is right there behind him now. Through they turn across the loose. Rob Shield looking to try to build the advantage here and get away from the opposition. Through they turn, nose to tail, second and third, and Chris Woollett now knows he's got a real fight on his hands. You can see now why sometimes it pays to get the joker lap out of the way first. Then you can just concentrate on catching. You don't have to worry about assessing a gap and wondering if you've got enough in hand. You just push, push, push. So Chris Woollett, leaving it late in the race, loses the lead. And now he will start the last lap in a moderately distant second place. He can't really think about catching the leader. Instead, he's got to think about defending that second place. Down they turn through the hairpin. The race leader breaking away as best he can, Rob Shield. But Chris Woollett hanging on to that second spot as they work their way up again towards that chicane and then onto the loose section. Round the back of the paddock. You see how the cars lean on the suspension and there's contact there as Morgan Bailey dives up the inside of Chris Woollett who gets forced off the road. Woollett goes one side of the tyre stack, Morgan Bailey goes the other. But in fairness, he lets Chris Woollett take back the plate and will continue the fight across the loose. So Chris Woollett hangs on to the position, but only just. And certainly now Morgan Bailey looks the quicker of the two. Nothing to choose between them as they bounce across the loose section once again. Nose to tail, these two. There is Rob Shield looking strong up front, heading down towards Honda Curve and then towards the chequered flag. Chris Woollett is going to be second, Morgan Bailey is going to be third. They're going to qualify for the final, but it's Rob Shield who wins semi-final one for the Swiss Sports. And a great drive to come home victorious with Chris Woollett over two seconds behind him. Morgan Bailey third from Rob Maynard, Adam Weaver fifth just missing out and it's Connor James in sixth. Semi-final two for the Swift Sport Rallycross contenders about to get underway. Simon Ovenden on pole position. Brother Tristan has been going well in the Super Nationals. There's Christian Hainsworth and Dominic Flitney on the front row of the grid as well. We go racing. Good start from the second row by Don McLeod, the Border Force officer with the Saltire across the roof. Who is going to take the Joker as they go towards the hairpin? Well, it's Dominic Flitney and Don McLeod from the outside of the grid. It's often the best way because it saves you having to worry about getting into the traffic and risking contact. Side by side for the race lead. Christian Hainsworth up the inside then of Simon Ovenden. They are still together as they work their way towards the chicane. Ovenden on the inside line will take the advantage and through he goes. He takes P1 then as they wriggle through the chicane and now they go to the loose for the first time of asking. Dust is kicked up from the race leader. But up front then, Simon Ovenden trying to break away as the cars now wriggle their way across this slippery section for the first time. Those that have served the joker lap join in at the back and can push, push, push. There you can see Dominic Flitney in the flit speed car is already caught up with the traffic. It's uh, Philip Cruikshank just up ahead of him as a big, big slide for Christian Hainsworth delays him a little bit coming towards Honda Curve there. Over the timing line they'll go, all of the road being used by Ovenden. So they turn their way through, down towards the hairpin, joker lap taken this time by Christian Hainsworth. Chris Woollett, we saw in the first semi-final, was the winner of the final at Croft. And it was Simon Ovenden that you're looking at in the lead of this race, who was the winner last time out at Lyndon. Hainsworth there gets back on just ahead of Matt Maxted. Maxted, somebody else we've not seen much of this year, but he's going strongly here at Pembroke. So Simon Ovenden is on his own. He's got the gap, he's got the advantage. And now as he turns his way up to the top of the lap, he's trying to build as big a cushion as he can so that he can maintain the lead when he serves the joker lap and has to duck back in in front of the traffic. Through they turn. There's Don McLeod, XRX 150 racer. First full season in the Swiss sport but going strongly. He's got himself ahead of Philip Cruikshank now as they head back towards the tarmac. And another spectacular slide. This time it is Matt Maxted hustling on as they rejoin the tarmac off the loose. Suddenly you get a completely different sensation. There's more bite in the grip and that's unsettling some of the cars that may have been sideways on the loose. And suddenly when they hit the tarmac, Everything grips back up, and it's a bit of a handful. Ovenden serves the joker, maintains the lead. He comes back on ahead of Christian Hainsworth. The two of them now power their way through Deveni Bend, heading towards that chicane and then towards the loose section. Hard on the brakes. Turn right, turn left, turn right again. 
You see the cars threading their way up towards the loose. Meantime, there, 247 is Dominic Flitney. Now, what further progress can he make? It looks as though he is inching up onto the tail of the traffic. Matt Maxted is up the road ahead of him. Remember, it's the top four we need to see go through. In 145, Christian Hainsworth pushing on, trying to bring down the gap against the leader, Simon Ovenden. But, of course, he's got to finish in the top four. The last thing he needs is to push so hard, he makes a mistake, goes off the road, and doesn't qualify at all. So now the drivers have to be pretty sensible about this. If they're second, is it worth staying there and qualifying or worth going for broke? There's a lockout from Simon Ovenden then at the end of the pit straight, turning his way through the hairpin. The battle is on behind. Look, Matt Maxted ahead of a really committed Dominic Flitney using all of the road. Goes a little bit wider, but what he does maintain is the momentum. Does that help him on the next long left? Hainsworth locks up as he scrabbles right and then left and then right again. But no matter what anybody seems to be throwing at him today, it looks like Simon Ovenden has got the answer. He and Morgan Bailey tied on points after the qualifying heats at the very top. So both showing great pace and Ovenden again here looking good. And of course, he is on target for a victory. It wasn't quite so easy for Morgan Bailey in his race. So does that put Simon Ovenden in the box seat heading for the final? We'll wait and see as there back onto the tarmac goes the 83 Matt Maxton car. Dominic Flitney tucked up behind him. So that fierce fight's on for third rather than for the lead of the race because they go over the timing line again with Ovenden looking strong. Works his way round the back of the paddock. The fans on the banking watching what's going on. And there, Matt Maxted serves the joker. In so doing, loses a chunk of time and falls back behind Dominic Flitney. So Flitney up to third. Here, Don McLeod is busy battling with Philip Cruikshank as they break for the hairpin. Blasting their way up now towards the next part of the lap as there, Matt Maxted turns through the chicane. He's on the power and will hit the loose in a moment. Simon Ovenden then blasting his way up towards the end of the lap, back onto the tarmac. He's got this healthy advantage over everybody else. It is looking mighty impressive, this race for Simon Ovenden. And as he works his way towards the last lap board, only now a real disaster is going to cost him a semi-final win. But crucially, he wants to be a final winner. Best way to do that, start from pole position. Lower down the order, Philip Cruikshank still hustling on behind Don McLeod, but I think he's lost a bit too much ground now, and that slide ain't going to help either. The car gets all unsettled, corrects it, turns into Honda Curve, but it's another two, three lengths lost. Simon Ovenden up towards the loose once again. He'll just turn out of the chicane, but now he can control this pace all the way to the flag. There is Don McLeod further back in the pack. Small engines, of course, these Suzuki's have, so they haven't got the acceleration that you get used to seeing from the Super Nationals or the supercars, for example. But don't think for a moment there's any less commitment being put in because with them being relatively underpowered, you've got to maintain the momentum all the time. So they take some driving, and the master here has been Simon Ovenden, who will turn his way through to score semi-final two honours. Checkered flag is at the ready, and it's going to be a win for Simon Ovenden, who comes through now to take the flag and victory. Second will go the way of Christian Hainsworth, and third in the background, Dominic Flitney, accelerating his way now up towards the line as Don McLeod heads for the checkered flag as well. But I fear he's going to be outside that magic four. He fends off Philip Cruikshank, but let's just confirm as they come across the line where Matt Maxted is going to slot into the queue. He should be fourth, having taken the joker a little while ago. There is the flag to McLeod and Cruikshank. <laughs> Semi-final two, won by Simon Ovenden. Christian Hainsworth second from Dominic Flitney, and Matt Maxted does indeed qualify fourth ahead of Don McLeod and Philip Cruikshank. Six laps of action in prospect. The Swift Sport Rallycross final set to get underway. It is Simon Ovenden on pole position. Rob Shield and Chris Woolett with him. Then Christian Hainsworth and Morgan Bailey on row two. The third row, Dominic Flitney, Rob Maynard and Matt Maxted. This, on the evidence of the heats and the semis, is going to be good. Green lights on. In his blast off as they run down towards the hairpin. Now, who is going to serve the joker lap early on? There's contact straight away between Shield and Ovenden. Woolett goes for the joker. Bailey goes for the joker. 
Chris Woolock could well have put himself in the box seat by doing that. Of course, again, by being on the outside of the road, it does help to get that out of the way rather than risk forcing away across the traffic and take the clipping point for the first corner. Overton it is, leading the pack then. Rob Shield right up behind him and Dominic Flitney third. Through the chicane they turn. Now onto the loose. Dust this time rather than mud kicked into the face of those behind you. And they turn their way into the next left, right S. And then the speed builds as they work their way back towards the tarmac. So Simon Ovenden, a winner earlier on this year. He won at Lydon. He leads the pack here. The Croft winner, Chris Woolett, is somewhere in that dust storm. Rob Maynard goes through in the black and white number 76 entry. Rob also with a bit of work to do here as there Dominic Flitney fends off Christian Hainsworth. Flitney has made a good start in fact for the third row of the grid. He's running with that leading gaggle but Hainsworth comes up to challenge as they go over the line now. To the inside line he looks and Flitney goes for the joker lap taking Rob Maynard with him so they have that longer run towards Hatchet. Back now onto the conventional circuit and then they'll turn their way from the chicane onto the loose part of the road. So the flit speed car of the race preparation man Dominic Flitney goes up towards the chicane. Still the race leader then Simon Oven and trying to break clear of the rest. Chris Woolett and Morgan Bailey and there is Bailey in 26. They are playing catch up having of course jokered if that's a verb on the first lap. Simon Ovenden then turning his way up through that next S. Christian Hainsworth running third. Now can he go after the top two or is he going to be caught here by the Woolett Bailey battle that's going on behind him? Race leaders out of Honda Curve, up towards the timing line they come now. Past the pits, over the timing line goes Simon Ovenden. Locks up, a little bit of tar smoke from the rear, turns right, and he's being hustled on now by the charging Rob Shield behind him. Christian Hainsworth then goes and serves the Joker lap. gap between the race leaders coming down ever so slightly and third and fourth Woolett and Bailey remember they serve the joker on the first lap so now they're picking off places as the others have to serve the joker lap themselves the question is whether they will inherit first and second once the top two have to serve their joker laps what they've got to do now is work together and keep pushing and try to get close enough to the top two so they will inherit Across the loose section they come, speed building all the time. Woolett heading back towards the tarmac through that right-hander and now drops down towards Honda Curve. Through the right they go, over the timing line. Chris Woolett ahead, Morgan Bailey behind him. Locking up, standing on the brakes. They turn into, if you like, the first right-hander, whereas it's the longer second option that's the joker lap. Neither of the top two serve it this time. So is Chris Woolett going to get there? There are the leaders. The gap between them still looking as though it's come down ever so slightly as Rob Shield hustles on behind Simon Ovenden. Third and fourth as one. And Morgan Bailey realising that if he challenges Woolett for third place and Woolett defends, they're going to hold each other up. So he's just got to sit there for the moment and try to challenge if and when they inherit the place. Working together then, it seems, they come through the S's. Speed builds as they make the run towards Tarmac again. They bounce their way across the loose, hit the Tarmac, and straight away the car feels completely different. They're in fifth place, Christian Hainsworth, and behind him is Dominic Flitney, and he also has dropped back, of course, now that the Joker has unwound. The leaders go through, there's the fight still raging on for third place between Woolett and Bailey. And Morgan Bailey tries to get a quicker exit, but to no avail this time. Through Divani Bend they go. The top two are on the loose again. But it looks as though they are going to serve their joker right at the very end of the race. And that's always a bit risky if you've not built up enough of a cushion. Hainsworth running fifth. Flitney is sixth. Seventh there is Maynard. Rob turning right and then left and then right again from tarmac to loose. The Swift Sport Championship bringing new drivers into Rallycross. And there, Morgan Bailey drifting a little bit wide, losing momentum and losing time against Chris Woolard. Simon Ovenden has been pressing on, trying to build a gap, race long. Now, out comes the last lap board. Rob Shield is behind him. They start the last lap. They head down towards the first corner. And this time, it is the joker lap for both of them. And as they turn right, there's a big lump in the road that almost fires over and too far wide. Look, because he's over the grass. Who's going to be second? Woolett comes up to challenge Rob Shield now. 
Simon Overland has kept the advantage. Chris Woolett is right on the tail of Rob Shield for second place. Is he going to be able to make a move? It's got to be now on the inside line, but he can't do it. They've all concertinaed up, therefore, but it means that the race lead is still held by Simon Ovenden as they work their way across loose again. He's heading for a second victory of the season. And now, look, he's got this cork in the bottle behind him because Rob Shield is keeping everybody else at bay. Through they turn. They're on the loose once more. Blasting their way back onto tarmac. And the chequered flag is just around the corner. It is going to be waved for Simon Overton, who's going to win at Pembrey. A second win of the year in the Swift Sport Rallycross Championship for Simon Overton, who comes through just ahead of Rob Shield. And it's Chris Woollett for the last place on the podium ahead of Morgan Bailey after a great finish. Final results confirm the win for Simon Overton, Rob Shield second, Chris Woollett third. Morgan Bailey, the best of the rest, fourth ahead of Christian Hainsworth and Dominic Flitney, with Ron Maynard seventh, and it's Matt Maxted in eighth. In the championship, Simon Ovenden now pulling away a little bit from Chris Woollett. Up to third, though, is Rob Shield. Morgan Bailey fourth ahead of Rob Maynard and Christian Hainsworth in sixth.